striking an all-Canadian matchup as the Flames play host to the Montreal Canadiens who begin a Canadian swing that will take them from here to Edmonton to Vancouver and then on to Winnipeg to wrap it up. For the Calgary Flames, points in each of their first three games. They haven't opened a season with points in four straight since the franchise moved here to Calgary back in 1980. A great start for the Flames. T.J. Galliardi standing by with our Ryan Rashad. Jay, one of the terms that's been used about your hockey club early this season is work ethic. Where is that coming from specifically? Well, it starts from our leaders and, uh, you know, it started a camp and we're working it all the way through and we got to do it 82 games this year. TJ, on a personal note, you're a Calgary boy. You watch games here as a kid. What does it mean to you to see this rink put back together considering everything that the city and this rink has been through? Yeah, it's a testament to the community and the city and, uh, you know, we want to play hard for them every night and give them something to be proud of. Thanks, TJ. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Sure. Thank you, Ryan. As the Montreal Canadiens take to the ice, they do so with a large core of support as they often receive when they come to Western Canada. And there are lots of people in red, white, and blue, not red and black, sitting in the lower bowl here for Montreal for a long time. They used to play the Flames over the holidays seven times since 1991. This matchup happened on New Year's Eve. But now it'll be early in the season. And Montreal looking for its first win here in Calgary since 2002. They've lost six straight games here to the Calgary Flames. Set now for the National Anthems and Heather Luzgano. Please rise, remove your hats, and join the longtime singing voice of your Calgary Flames tonight, Heather Lascano, accompanied by members of the Calgary Police Service in the singing of our Canadian national anthem. expectations. Ray Ferraro is one of the emerging stories is a guy who's not that new to the Flames, but Michael Backlund has emerged in the early going. And they're looking for Michael Backlund, the 22-year-old, to take a step this year. That He's played 173 of the 203 games that the Flames centermen have up the middle. With Matt Stajan out of the lineup, he's by far their most experienced center. He's getting a gift opportunity here to play top six minutes. He played 21 against the Vancouver Canucks the other night. He had a goal and they look for Backlund to move from prospect to top six forward to top two centerman this year. He's getting a great opportunity right now. Joe Colbert, number eight, faces off for Calgary, acquired from Toronto for a fourth round pick at the start of the season. Ryan White out there for Montreal. So the two fourth lines start against each other. The play's offside at the Calgary line. So when Montreal starts, Ryan White and Travis Mullen and, and Rene Bork with with Brandon Cross sitting close by, Brian McGratton and Colburn get on the ice with Lance Bowman so they'll match their heavies against each other. 
each team tries to get back in it. You mentioned, Gord, just the third game of the year for Montreal. There's Lance Bump with it, slides by him. P.K. Subban with a shot that hit Rennie Bork, and the Flames are away quickly. Bullock up to Colburn, back to Bobo with a drive, and that goes off the stick, up and out of play. Tonight's game plan is brought to you by Tim Hortons, Canada's favorite coffee. With the Canadians not playing very frequently over the first part of the season, Michelle Therrien will use short, quick shifts early in the game to get their Canadians up on their toes and attack a Calgary team that's kicked away some leads over their first three games. Bob Hartley's crew was in charge of the Vancouver game when they started to turn the puck over. Some costly turnovers in the, in the third period that eventually cost them a point. They'll want to manage the puck better at each blue line. Calgary's led in all three of its games with a three-goal lead against Washington, losing in a shootout, then lost to Vancouver in overtime the other night. Hartley set a pretty demanding tone for a, a team that doesn't have high expectations this year. He went right down the bench to Lance Boma, who didn't get to his boards early on with puck that was kept in at the blue line. He says, you've got to be there. He's right on top of these guys as he's trying to cut the margin for error for them. Here's Backlund along with Hoodler and TJ Galliardi. And you heard Galliardi talking to our Ryan Rashad before the game. Galliardi took a bad penalty in that opener against Washington for roughing the goaltender. Apologized to teammates that scored a big goal the next night. And Galliardi, who is not a, a real experienced player, but on this team has more experience than a lot of the forwards, is a guy that has to lead by example. And the penalty he took, Gordon Washington, was, was undisciplined. And it, in a sense, was a, a selfish type of penalty that helped cost them that third period lead. Back at the line, Mark Giordano with a shot that goes off a leg and wide. Curtis Glenn cross now to street. Rafael Diaz has lost his stick. And T.J. Brody with a shot. That goes wide. Here's Brian Giant on it. Mechanics off the wall but not out. Giordano plays it right back in deep. Opening moments of the first period. Brody being bumped there by Prust. And Andre Markov finds Thomas Placanitz. He's away with Gianta, but Gianta peels off on a change. So Placanitz sends it down on Joey McDonald. Now turned over by Giordano. But Galchenyuk couldn't keep it in. To the line of Gallagher, Galchenyuk, and Eller is on the ice for Montreal. He has scored five of the team's seven goals so far this year. Street got bumped off the puck along the wall. Here's Gallagher with it. Big week for Brendan Gallagher. He'll play his first game in his hometown of Vancouver this weekend. He'll be opening the wallet for some tickets there. They don't give them away anymore, do they? <laughs> no, they sure don't. And Gallagher winds his way in. It's bumped there by Dennis Weidman. Now Gallagher back on it. Chris crossing with Eller. And Gallagher ridden off the puck by Weidman. As Sven Berchi picks it up. His long pass for Monaghan missed. What a start for Sean Monaghan in his first week in the league, his first goal, his first point, his first game, his first stitches. Lots to like about Sean Monaghan, the way that as an 18-year-old he plays the game with such responsibility. There'll be a decision to be made relatively shortly here in Calgary whether Monaghan stays past the nine games that he's allotted whether they burn a year on his contract or not. Here's his first National Hockey League goal. He goes to the front of the net. He pushes Wisniewski back to the crease and deposits it in the net behind Bobrovsky. And then real nice patience here against Vancouver on Sunday where he beats Eddie Lack on the two-on-one. A real mature game for a very young player. Draw one back to the point. There's Brody with a drive and Price steered that away. Any concern he was minus three in that game, Ray? No, not for me. I mean, I, I believe if you're 18 years old and you're playing on, you're playing in the NHL and you're playing against guys like Henrik Sedin as he was for much of that Vancouver game, you're going to get burned once in a while. And the evaluation for for Sean Monaghan can't be about one night. You know, he, he has a great night in Columbus. You can't say he's ready to play in the NHL. He has a bad night or iffy night against Vancouver. You can't say he doesn't belong in the NHL. you got to look at it for a month which is the nine games, and make your evaluation there. I, I think they're going to be under pressure to keep them good, but I, I think with almost every 18-year-old, to send them back buys you another year on the end of that entry level and into their restricted free agent contracts. They're a more mature player then. I'd rather have them then. And as Ottawa 67s are off to a decent start in the OHL, they're 4-4 four four without them. Now a chance in front. Galliani on the turnover. It's cleaned up, though, by Josh Georges. 
and moved ahead by Flacanis to Rennie Moore. Moore spent three years here in Calgary at back-to-back -back 27 goal years with the Flames. Traded for Mike Camilleri and Kerry Ramo, who is the backup tonight for the Flames. Somewhat surprisingly, given that Ramo played an opening night, Berchi comes in and the play's offside at the Montreal line. Well, Joey McDonald makes his third straight start in the Calgary goal, and Bob Hartley said it was just a gut feel that McDonald played well in Columbus. He deserved a second start against Vancouver, and among the saves he made was just a remarkable diving yes. stop on, on Chris Higgins, and so he gets a third straight start. And Ramo will get the net back. He was okay in Washington. I, he didn't really have any fantastic saves he didn't have any goals that you looked at and went oh that was a, a crushing goal against he'll get another chance and then he's got to try and grab the net and keep it there's ryan white with a long shot of mcdonald will hang on to that calgary's got new jersey here on friday in fact the devils are in town now rare that you have three nhl teams in a city at the same time and then the flames hit the road for a western swing into anaheim san jose la phoenix and dallas Marty, the southwestern swing. Yeah. Marty Jelena talking to Bob Hartley there. He comes right down the bench, Jelena does, to talk to Joe Colburn. Colburn playing in his third game for the Flames, still trying to learn the system, get his feet underneath him. And he hasn't played a whole lot in, in Calgary here. He's got to make a mark because he's going to get a good opportunity somewhere down the line here. But he's got to push for those minutes. Street battle there with Markov, and Eller picks up the loose puck. He finds Galchenyuk, and now Gallagher puts it down in the Calgary zone, gets T.J. Brody to turn, in comes Gallagher, a backhand shot, and McDonald makes the save on that quick dash by Brendan Gallagher. And back the other way come the Flames, Giordano leads the rush, four wide, sends it back in front street, and then hit a skate, and now Galchenyuk gets it right back. Chipped on center ice, and Gallagher slides it down to the Calgary zone and hits off on the chain. 3-1, the shots on goal in favor of Montreal. Berchi works his way in, plays that rink wide, chance back in front, Butler couldn't tap it home on the feed from Backlund. And that, back the other way comes David Dayarnay, has that swatted away by Chris Russell. This line so key for Montreal, Dayarnay, Briere, and Pacioretty. Pacioretty back in the Montreal lineup. After missing the last two with injury, there's Berchi being sprung, but the play is offside. And the faceoff will come back out to center ice. Much has been made of this young Montreal line. Look at the chemistry and awareness that on the ice as Galchenyuk goes low to support the puck and then Gallagher comes all the way across the ice to receive the puck. He drives wide on Brody and look at him get his shoulder down driving towards the net and he forces McDonald into the backhand stop. But Galchenyuk, who's a natural centerman, comes low on the breakout. It's an easy pass for the defenseman. It's a five-footer. And then Gallagher comes all the way across the ice to support the puck. And in two quick short passes, the Canadians are out of the zone. If you call Dayarnay, Pacioretty, and Briere the third line, no one in Montreal's third or fourth line has scored a goal yet. It's a small sample to be sure, but... It'll be interesting to see. You know, Dayarnay had a real struggle last year for the Canadians. Never really found his footing and had the type of impact here that he had a couple of years ago. Daniel Briere is become more effective on the power play than he has at five on five. They hope more ice time and a change of venue here in Montreal will help spark him. And then Pacioretty is, you know, right on the cusp of being a, a developing power forward into one that teams have to game plan against. And you know, he, he hurt his wrist in, in the opener against Toronto, didn't play in game two. So that line really hasn't had much time together. Back with for Hoodler, trying to backhand that in front. And P.K. Subban plays it high off the glass, trying to find Briere, who's streaking away. And back the other way comes Sven Berchi. Plays it down to the Montreal zone. Price for Josh Georges. Patch ready, bumped by Backlund, puts the puck up to center ice. Michael Backlund with Montreal changing to Yuri Hoodler. And Hoodler winds his way into the Montreal zone, taps it down to Berchi. Sends it back in front, he missed Backlund. And here's Chris Butler with it. Down to Backlund, in for Berchi. Being harassed there by Subban, the puck loses at the side of the goal for Markov to Price. Brandon Price looks in for Mooney, and Joe Colburn collide at the Calgary line. And Shane O'Brien back to pick it up. O'Brien back with it. Down to Butler. And both teams will change with six and a half gone 
In the opening period, Colburn works his way in. Joe Colburn posts up, waiting for help to arrive. Drops it back, wide in the backhand pass for Russell. Russell trying to center it, goes to the other side to Colbert. Big throw for Colbert to play here in Calgary where he grew up. And back at the line, Galliardi was trying to find wide and the pass was off the leg and back down the ice. Jones through the middle for Street, that pass just missed. Now Jones back on a big collision in the corner as he and Jarrettson already come together at the line held by Brody. Across he goes to Giordano. Winds and fires. That's off a of skate and wide. Glenn Cross steps up. And Brody plays it back in deep to him. Looks back to Jones. Peels off a check. And plays it across for Street. Now Gallagher intercepts. And looks ahead for Galgenia. Mark Giordano goes back to pick it up. Watched by Placanis, and here's Brody with it. Up ahead to Hoodler. Rink wide, he goes to Backlund. Michael Backlund in, goes off the stick, rather, of Johnson and Subban, just missed by Glenn Cross. Weidman shoots, that deflects just wide. Here's Subban with it. Snaps it across to Georges. Through the middle for Placanis, and Rene Bork was stopped in his tracks by Weidman. Weidman's thrown that hit several times this year already. Now Markov back with a long shot, kicked out by McDonald. Diaz on the other side, fans on the shot. Plays it back in the corner. Back with intercepts, and he finds Hoodler. Long time between whistles here in this period. As Galliardi comes in on Diaz, TJ Galliardi with it now. Working down low on Markov. Fields the puck and plays it down for Butler. Chris Butler centers with that miss, two sticks, Monahan and Hoodler. And back come the Canadians the other way, it's Pacioretty along with Placanitz. Max Pacioretty between the legs, moves in front, and Galliardi takes that away from him. I was watching Thomas Hurdle on YouTube today. Wasn't that something? Unbelievable Always goal. Always nice when your fourth goal is the prettiest one. <laughs> Offside at the Calgary line, 11-21 to go here in the opening period. Bodies flying in Calgary on Scotia. A couple catastrophic turnovers against the Canucks. Look how efficiently they've moved the puck. A couple of long passes from their defense to their wingers. That led to a scoring chance from Russell. Here's Chris Butler, one quick, efficient pass to Brian McGratton. And here's Russell again. On the change, he holds the puck. The Canadians open the seam up. One pass, and they're out of the zone. Real nice puck work by the Flames as they've spent virtually no time in their zone yet in this first period. Russell, a smooth skater from Caroline, Alberta, about an hour and 20 minutes from here. Which Produced one of the smoothest skaters of all time, world champion Kurt Browning. Good thing he couldn't score. Travis Mullen shoots and puts that wide. You got about eight zillion breakaways in minor hockey. Couldn't put many in the net. In comes Monahan with it. Little backhand pass to Stephen Arusha. Rebound, score! Sean Monahan again, and the Blades have the lead. Oh, goodness. Sven Barchi took an absolute roasting from Brian Burke earlier in this before the start of the season. His play on the boards where he gets body on body allows the puck to come outside the zone. That opens up this two-on-one. Stemniak, who's had a real nice start to the year on the right side of Sean Monaghan. They crisscross. Stemniak shot is stopped by Price, and there's the rookie. Three games in a row, and Sean Monaghan has given the Flames a 1-0 lead. And now, shot by Galliardi goes wide. That's points in four games to start his career. Ray, the last Calgary Flame to open his career with points in four games was Sergei Makarov back in 1988. Here's Galliardi now peeling back in the corner. Well, whether we think he's an NHL or the evaluation is that whether he is or isn't, Sean Monaghan is playing like one. What a fabulous start to the 18-year-old's career. There's just the simplicity to his game, Gord, that I really like. He doesn't try to do anything too fancy. He doesn't hang on to the puck too well. He moves it. He gets his feet moving. He gets to the open part of the ice. In come the Canadians as Lars Eller moves in. The puck bounced away from him. And scooped up by Giordano. 
Rink wide, he goes for Jones, busting in with Street. In comes David Jones, and Gallagher booked that away. At the line, Jordano holds it. Jones and Shane O'Brien came over from Colorado in the deal and said Alex Tangay and Corey Sarich back the other way. Jones has had a real nice start for, for the Flames as well. Four points in the start of the year for him. Health is going to be a key for him. There's John George ripping that just wide. Now Beer hacks it back in. McDonald makes a leaving save and kicks that to the sideboard. Street battles there with Briere. As George is the only Montreal defenseman under contract for next year, plays it down the ice. DK Subban's a restricted free agent. And the rest of the regulars, Barry Jared Nordy, are unrestricted. Includes Andre Markov, Alexi Emelin, and Raphael Diaz. Now Fedorini fires it down in the Calgary zone as Butler's back for it. Johnson's 5-3 Montreal. Calgary leading 1-0 on Sean Monahan's third goal of the year in his fourth NHL game. So we'll get a look again at Monahan's goal. And it starts way back in the Calgary zone where this play by Barchi where he gets on the body with Subban and allows the puck to come to center. Nice body contact by Stempniak, and the puck is turned over. Poor neutral zone play by Montreal as they get standing around, but a nifty little pass from Monaghan, and then he stops in front of the goal line where he's got a chance at the rebound, and Stempniak shot is deposited into the empty cage. Now Monaghan out for the defensive zone face off against Buchanan and wins it. Berchi battling for it as the puck is high in the air. Glove the head, but not out by Butler. Back goes to Volcanis with a long shot, and that goes off the leg of Berchi. And Stepniak bangs it off the glass, but up and out of play. 8.25 to go in the opening period, and the Sean Monahan story gets bigger and bigger in Calgary. The buttons, here's Ryan Rashog with more. Yeah, Gord, one of those buttons is working hard even on the morning of a game day. Uh, one of the changes Hartley made from last year, no more optional morning skates. This is what went down at about 9 o'clock this morning. About a 45-minute skate pushed the players pretty hard. He's also been known to introduce new drills even on game days. Last year, he had optional morning skates, hated the results that it got. He felt he had a more veteran team last year and that he could do it, said it was a big mistake. So it's no more optionals on game days for this younger Calgary team, Gordon. Six o'clock local start, so that morning skate was at 9.30. You know, it says he got some new drills. When the, when the terrible flooding went through Calgary and went, you know, buried the bottom half of this building, all of, of course, what was underneath the building was lost, including all of Bob Hartley's coaching manuals. So you, coaches keep notes and they write drills and they see new drills and they keep a ongoing logs and years and years of stuff was just washed away. When Terry Crisp coached here, Ray, he had boxes and boxes of notes that he kept during the game. He always wrote notes during the game and Flames management asked him what he did with them. He said, well, I look at them all the time. He said, really? We hid them three months ago. Markov shoots up goes high and wide. Now Prust with it. Brody kicking away in as well as Ryan White picks it up. Back to Markov with a shot. McDonald gets a piece of that and falls. The puck loose behind the Calgary goal. And now fired back in by DeArnay. Let's say that, Ray, you would not have been a big fan of the brisk morning skate. When I finally got to the point that they were optional if I wanted to take them, I thought they were fantastic. <laughs> I never wanted to go on the ice in the morning once I got older. When I was younger, I wanted to. I felt like I needed it. When I got older, I, I wanted the rest. Here's Gallagher spinning back. And Galchenyuk tries to center for Eller. That pass intercepted by Colbert. Now loses it, but Gallagher backhand shot. And McDonald falls on that. There Gallagher's nose to nose with an old Vancouver Giant teammate, Lance Boma. Much of Gallagher's shifts end up like this. <laughs> where there's a whole pile of players in the middle, but smallest guy on the ice, he stays on the play, and the puck always seems to find him. One of the reasons is that he's always hanging around 15 feet from the net. The puck gets turned over by Colburn here, and he's gotta, he's gotta be harder on that puck. 
And there it comes right to Gallagher. And here's the much bigger Boma trying to shove him out of the way. He's always had this knack for being around the front of the net, for having the puck come to him when he was in junior, even as he was a, a youngster growing up in the, in the Vancouver area. He's always been able to score from in tight. Georgia with a shot that shattered the stick of Galliardi on the way down, and then Dayarnay with it. Battling with O'Brien, and O'Brien finds Hoodler. Gary Hoodler backhands that down the ice. It will trickle down to Carey Price. Georges for Briere. And Daniel Briere drops that back as Francis Bouillon brings it ahead. Bouillon finds Pacioretty, sends it back in front, the pass knocked away by Chris Butler. And now Butler off the glass, over the head of Dayarnay, and up to center ice. Pacioretty would probably be better served there, Gord, just to fire that puck at the net instead of trying to feather one through to, to Briere. Briere will get to the rebound. Pacioretty's got a good shot, and that's probably a, a nice time to use it. And Stepniak's shooting goes off a stick, up and out of play. Nice catch. The NHL on TSN is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Day here in southern Alberta. And the Calgary Flames have thus far exceeded some expectations. There's McDonald had to try to glove that as Icy was waved off, but Canis goes back to Markov. And the puck all the way back down to the Montreal zone. And Calgary has beaten Montreal six straight times here. That includes an outdoor game at McMahon Stadium a couple of years ago. Weidman bumping there with Bork. And Rene Bork picks up the loose puck. Plays it down for Gianta. Back he goes to Tenorti trying to keep it alive. Berchi stepped into him. Russell with a rolling puck on his backhand being harassed there by Bork. Stepniak moved it out. And Buchanitz in front of the Calgary bench lost the puck to Stepniak. Ahead to Berchi. And at the line, Berchi has to regroup and now fire it back down to the Montreal zone. Long lead pass to Gianta as both teams are changing. And here's David Jones with it. Five and a half to go in the opening period. Calgary leading the Montreal 1-0 on the goal by Sean Monaghan. Now has goals in three straight for the Flames. Gallagher back the other way. Fire saved made by McDonald. Loose puck in front. And once again, Gallagher going for the rebound. Draws the attention of the Calgary Flames. Galchenyuk in there as well. As Calgary once again sees lots of number 11 in the crease. 5-16 to go in the opening period. Shots are 7-3 to Montreal. Flames lead 1-0. Approach to trying to keep Chicago fans out of the building. If you tried to buy tickets online, you could only buy them from St. Louis area zip codes. Lots of Montreal fans here tonight, as always, when the Canadians come to Western Canada. Shot by Gallagher goes off a leg and wide. I guess that's fine if you've got enough people <laughs> in your zip codes to be to buy the tickets. Was well, a time not so long ago when St. Louis would take ticket holders from Mars if they could. So the Flames we mentioned have points in each of their first three games, and they have surprised some people. How about four goals in each of the first three games? They only scored four goals in three straight games once all of last season. Uh, I really thought the the two areas they would struggle in would be to to produce offense and keeping the puck out of the net. Well, they haven't kept it out of their net very well yet, but their their offense has, has wallpapered some of their mistakes. And I don't know if that's a long-term success for them, but they've, they've sure been aggressive out of the gate, and as a result, they've found a way to score some goals. Here is Briere on it. Under 15 minutes of ice time for Briere in that game against Philadelphia on Saturday. Drops it back to Pacioretty, puts it back in front of the pass just missed Dayarnay. And O'Brien on it for Hoodler. Along with Galliardi and Butler jumping up. And Hoodler has got his stick stuck in Pacioretty's equipment. The play's offside at the Montreal line. Pacioretty had two sticks for about five seconds. Gord, I mentioned a few moments ago that Pacioretty had Briere on a two-on-one or a two-on-two, -two, and he probably should have shot the puck. Pacioretty missed the last game with a wrist injury. Suffered against Toronto. There was his last chance. And he miscues this as this goes wide of the net. It's perhaps an attempt to pass halfway to DRNA, but not not exactly 100% as, as Pacioretty is. 
Montreal's going to get the first power play of tonight's game. And they're checking Ryan White to see if he's cut. And it'll be Lance Boma who goes off. Calgary penalty number 17, two minutes high sticking. Kyle Raymond with the call. Right, right off the draw, you're going to see Boma as the, the puck goes forward. Boma's going to try and tie up White and then get to the forecheck, and a stick comes up. A careless penalty for Lance Bowman. Montreal's power play will go to the game's first opportunity, and it's the young, the young line that didn't get much power play time last year. They'll start on it. And they win the draw back to Subban along with Markov. It's Eller, Galchenyuk, and Gallagher. Up front, Markov tees it up. That shot blocked by Street. Keller looks down to Galchenyuk. Montreal in the early going, two for 13 on the power play. Bork and Gallagher have their goals in the man advantage. Gallagher's allowed three goals on seven opposition attempts so far on the penalty kill. That pass not going to midair by Galliardi. And Gallagher takes it right back. Back to Subban. With some time to Galchenyuk. Lots of traffic in front. Subban fires that shot blocked and fired down the ice by Backlund. Three and a half to go. In the opening period, Montreal, the game's first power play as Subban steps ahead. Now it's Blakanitz along with Gianta and Bork. Gianta sends it back in front. Save made by McDonald. And the rebound fired down the ice by Butler. Diaz to Placanitz. Winds his way across the line, drops that off for Bouillon. He was poke checked neatly. And a chance now for the Flames shorthand as Glenn Cross sends it in to David Jones. He's shot blocked by Diaz. And Bouillon back with it. Jones got a stick on that. And Giordano, with one hand of the stick, swept that away. 25 seconds to go on the Montreal power play. Diaz for Briere. Up for Dayardet. Across to Bouillon. Back to Diaz. Diaz shoots. It's off a leg and wide. Now Weidman on it. Try to poke that away. And back in the corner goes to Giordano. And for Stepniak. And a race for the buck of battle for it. Street gets that to the line and out. One shot on goal for Montreal on that power play. Bouillon and the Georges. Dancing in with Pacioretty. Long shot saved by McDonald. Rebound loose in front. Gallagher with a chance. It trickles over the crossbar. McDonald still down. Pacioretty shoots, and McDonald from his knees makes that save. Now it's an already on it. Spins away from Monahan. Back to Briere. His long shot knocked away by Brody. Kept alive by Tenorti. Sends that to the front of the goal. Pacioretty battling for it. Here's Dayarnay on it. Good pressure now by Montreal. Dayarnay has it bounce off his stick and hoovers away for Calgary. Hey. And to Berchi. His pass was off the skate of Pacioretty. Now Hoodler across the line. Gary Hoodler. Plays that down low. George is on it. Now Prust being bumped there by Berchi. And Tenorti hammered down by Hoodler. Monahan sends it back and back. He scores! Sam Berchi! Just zero awareness by Montreal of where the Flames are in the offensive zone. The Canadians have full possession of the puck as it's going to come back to Josh Georges. When it comes to him here, he just reverses it to Tenorti. Tenorti's got no idea that Hoodler's there. And Monaghan, a beautiful heads-up play to Sven Berchi. Berchi had come off the sideboards, gets to the front of the net, and he's got a tap in across the front of the net. He spent a lot of time talking in the pre-game show about Eller Gelchenyuk and Gallagher. Berchi and Monaghan, two real young players, team up with Yuri Hoodler, and they've had a nice start here for the Flames. 21-year-old Sven Berchi with the goal, and Monaghan has a goal of assist here in the first period. Weidman steps away from Moen. White steps into him, and David Jones has the puck. And Glenn Cross drops it off to Russell. Finds that by Subban. Final minute now, the opening period. And 
For the fourth consecutive game, Calgary has the lead. As Mullen sends it back in front. What a save by McDonald on a deflection by White. And sent all the way down to the Montreal zone. Icing called against Calgary. Center ice. Trust and Giordano into it. Another nice stop for Joey McDonald. He's been sharp here in the first period. Faced 12 shots and kicked them all aside. They're a real nice play from Moen to White. White goes to the front of the net and McDonald flashes the left leg out. Been a bit of a journeyman goaltender. Had some back issues in Detroit where Detroit let him go and the Red Wings ended up signing Jonas Gustafsson, who's not been healthy since they have had him in the Motor City. But McDonald bounced around a little bit, played in Grand Rapids of the American League, and then came here late last year and has worked his way as the most veteran of Calgary's three goaltenders. The other being Red O'Bara in the American Hockey League. Was claimed on waivers by Calgary, Ray, and probably the biggest reason he's stuck here through training camp is they didn't want to lose him on waivers to another team. They thought for sure if they put him on, someone would claim him. And now he's played three straight games. Now back with a steal of backhand shot on Price, and Terry Price makes the save on Michael Backlund. Good effort by Backlund, takes a turnover and gets to the, the scoring zone with the backhand. Price swallows it up. Hasn't had much chance on either of the two goals. He stopped Stempniak's initial shot that Monaghan put in the net and then Monaghan's pass right across the goal to Berchi for the tap in. Montreal very lax when they've been in their zone. That while they have the majority of the shots, 12 of the 17, the most dangerous of them, have come from the Flames, and as a result, the Flames have done a, a real nice job here in the first period. Even though being outshot, I've liked their period. Now Bork fires it down. McDonald along the wall. Buchanan picks it up, sends it back in front. David Jones got a stick on that. And now Weidman back forward for Calgary. At the line, held by George as his shot goes off Jones's stick. Final seconds of the period. And back goes to George. Long shot off the leg. And time expires. Montreal outshoots Calgary 12 to 5, but two of the five go into the Flames and a 2 nothing after 20 minutes. Coming up for first intermission with James Duffy and the panel. And he's doing everything he can to, to stay here. He is a two-way player, a 200-foot player. On the penalty kill, he gets a real good block. Watch him stay in the play to clear the puck down the ice. An undrafted free agent, Street, is strong on his feet, a real good skater, and he's done everything that he can to impress the Flames management. He's gotten a break here with Matt Stajan out of the lineup. There's a spot open in the middle of the ice and Street has taken advantage of it. With all the players they ran through camp and talked about many different players, maybe a little bit under the radar has been Ben Street. And he's really taken advantage of his opportunity. He doesn't want to be a part-time guy. He wants to be an NHL guy. And he's done, he's done a real nice job for the Flames early in this season. Four-year man in the University of Wisconsin, right? Two years ago, 27 goals for Wilkes-Barre, Pittsburgh's American League Farm Club. And not a whole lot of room in Pittsburgh up the middle of the ice, no, is there? No, no. And, and back when he was there, Stahl was there as well, of course, along with Crosby and Malkin. So you, you move around, you bounce around, you bide your time, and you hope somebody notices. And for Ben Street, he got a, a late call up into Calgary last year where he played most of the year in Abbotsford. And, He's taken a spot of an opening here and, and run through the door. Ray, you see the American League a lot because your son plays in it. How many Ben Streets are there in that league? Just needing the right chance. Oh, uh, there's, there's plenty. More than you would think. Some of them get frozen out like Street did in, in Pittsburgh because there's just no room for them. Some of them just need to find the right coach and the right opportunity Look for out. themselves. Loose puck in front and bounce down on McDonald. And Backlund back with it for Calgary. Michael Backlund looking for Galliardi. That's broken up by Gianta. He finds Placanitz. And Joey McDonald back for it. 33-year-old from Pitt to Nova Scotia. In comes Chris Russell with a shot that goes off the leg of Diaz and wide right back to Russell. Leaves it down for Street. Russell heading back to the... Defense position had the puck right behind him, and now Breer chips that down to the Calgary zone. It's played right back out. The pass misses Breer as 
Well, Brian goes back, an icing call, a quiet whistle. Well, Brian didn't hear it. No, that was that puck was deflected in the middle of the ice. And we, as we get a look at Joey McDonald's first period, where he kicked aside all 13 shots, some of them through traffic. He's a He's always been a battler, an old school type goaltender. There's not much form to him sometimes, but he's athletic, he's quick, and he was terrific in that first period. He's another guy here that's had an opportunity to play with a Flames team that's trying to put the pieces back together. And he's been waiting for an opportunity to play a lot of games in a row too, and right now he's getting that chance. Now Stepniak gotta try to center that puck for Sven Berchi. That was broken up, and Briere on it for Montreal. For Dayarnay with Pacioretty. In comes David Dayarnay. Into the middle, sends it back in front for Pacioretty. Shane O'Brien broke it up. Lost the puck to Breer, got a chance. And now Dayarnay with a shot that's blocked by O'Brien. The puck's under him. And Dayarnay gave a little poke there. O'Brien didn't like that much. As the Dayarnay line gets into the front of the net, Dayarnay should probably shoot that first one, but O'Brien makes a real nice play to block it. And then he realizes the turnover's been made and quickly jumps out to close the shooting lane down as he smothers that one-time attempt from Darnay. 14 to 6, the shots on goal in favor of Montreal. And now they'll put out Eller with Gallagher and Galchenyuk. Off one by Jones, the puck centered and knocked away by Giordano. Real good play by Ellery. Pushed the puck forward on the draw and beat everybody to it. Now Brody ahead for Jones to Street. Loose in the corner is Glenn Cross, and now Jones back with it to Brody. Slides it across for Giordano, has time, walks it and shoots. Pad saved by Price. And now Glenn Cross back on it, wins that battle for the puck. Finds Giordano in, shoots, blocks again, rebound, Glenn Cross, oh, what a save by Price! Came right across to take that away from Glenn Cross. And here's Glenn Cross back with it. Walking in as Giordano, fires that high and wide. Brody holds the line again for Giordano. Good pressure by the Flames here in the early going. Brody fires, and Price makes the save. Well, there is all kinds of passing lanes side to side in the Montreal zone, and the Flames are finding them, moving the puck. East to west across the front of the net, and Carey Price forced to make a fantastic stop. The Giordano shot is deflected in front of the net, and Glenn Cross walks across. And one times as you see Price quickly across to get his body on top of it. Now O'Brien back with it off the faceoff win. The puck leaves the zone, and the play's offside. Gordon, three of the four Flames games they've had multiple goal leads here and I think for the early part of the season teams have been caught by surprise a little bit by the Flames the, the expectations have been low for Bob Hartley's team and I don't believe teams have been ready to work against the Flames if there's one thing that Hartley and his staff have made non-negotiable it is the way that they work and they've responded at least early in this season Bratton and Moen having a long conversation before that face-off. And Butler fires it down. It's a small sample to be sure, Ray, but much better than the alternative. Whether it's small sample or not, it's part of the season. It's the early portion of your year, and you'd rather start reasonably well, or in their case, very, very well, than start to climb up the mountain. It's going to be a long enough year anyway for most teams as you've got to battle and scratch for points. The points go in the bank now. They mean the same as they do in March. Subban gave Colburn a hard ride. Then O'Brien steps into Moe. There's lots of ruffians on the ice right now. And now O'Brien collides there with White. The chance in front for Pruss. Turn away by McDonald. And Pruss back on it. Moen crisscrossing with Pruss. Now O'Brien back for it. McGrattan waiting along the wall. Through the middle for Boma. That's a nice exit pass from O'Brien on the backhand. He finds the middle of the ice and one quick pass. They're out of the zone. Now Galliardi spun around by Gianta. And Markov goes across for Diaz. And Rafael Diaz banks that back down to the Calgary zone. Montreal's last win here, January of 2002. Bork 
Stepped into Russell as the puck goes back down to the Montreal zone. Since then, a tie and six losses. For the Canadians in Montreal. Burn Calgary, rather. Now Hunter takes that rink wide pass, and Tenorti steps into him. Back goes Bouillon for it. Plays it across for Bork. Chips it ahead for Placanis. And Montreal engages the rush as Placanis chips it in deep, but Gionta peels off on a chain. Weidman turns it over to Placanis. Loose behind the Calgary goal. Now Weidman gathers it back up. Knocked down by Pacioretty for Briere. Daniel Briere. Spins back in the corner, sends that rink wide for Dayarnay. Back in front, McDonald steers that away. And we've got a tripping call coming up. And it's going against the Calgary Flames. It'll be Galliardi who goes off. Two minutes trip. Galliardi gets his stick into the feet of Briere. Galliardi's reaction tells you he thinks Briere took a flop. But the Flames will be shorthanded for the second time this evening. They did a terrific job on that first kill. Really didn't allow much for the Canadians. It'll be Briere at center. Along with Dayarnay and Pantoretti up front. Markov and Subban back on the point. And a scramble draw controlled by the Canadians. Back to Markov across to Subban. Subban to Markov. Back to Subban, the one-time shot. Blocked by the stick of Jones who quickly checks it. And Brody away for Calgary. Gently slides that down to the Montreal zone. And Jones' stick was broken. As he quickly changes it out. Markov back with it. Looks across for Subban. Behind the back for Markov. Sends it rink wide. Patch ready stick explodes on him as he puts it wide. Now Briere back with it. Patch ready with a new stick. Down to Briere. Markov sneaking in. Briere being harassed there by Giordano. Now Patch ready on it. He watched by Backlund. Briere. For Subban. Winds and fires. McDonald to save. Rebound. Markov. Oh, the save by McDonald. And another one. Andre Markov with two. Five-star chances, and Joey McDonald equal to the task. Two fabulous stops by McDonald. For the first time tonight, the Canadians show a little ill will other than the Gallagher line. Excellent point shot by Subban. McDonald pokes the rebound away from Dayarnay in the front of the net there, but he ends up poking it right on the stick of Markov, who's come in from the point. Markov stops it in the two pad stack. Yes. You don't see that much anymore. Joey McDonald makes a remarkable stop. That is a purely effort save by McDonald. Much the same, although going the other way on Chris Higgins from Vancouver on Sunday night. Gallagher back for Subban. Minutes to go on this power play. Now Gallagher with it. Works his way in down to Eller. And Lars Eller. Back to Galchenya. Subban teed up for the one timer. They go down low instead to Eller. Back to Galchenya. Markov down low in front of the net. And now Butler plays it off the leg of Gallagher. Wins the battle for the puck to Eller. Bronze goes to Markov. Walking in Andre Markov. Centers it and it goes through the feet of Galchenya. Bounces right back to Eller. To Subban. Across to Eller. Down low, Galchenyuk trying to center it, and McDonald will eat that up. And once again, Gallagher takes a bop in the face from T.J. Brody. Well, MLS on TSN continues tonight with the Vancouver Whitecaps taking on the Seattle Sounders. Live coverage underway at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on TSN 2. Better power play for the Canadians. They've had a a much better sense of time and space. They've moved the puck, been more patient than they were on that first one. Just can't get the puck behind Joey McDonald. Now back with a chance shorthanded in on Diaz. And Diaz takes him down. Now back and right back up, giving Diaz all he can handle. Final seconds of the Montreal power play. Gallagher working his way in for Galchenyuk. That's broken up by Jones. Gallagher trying to center it. Three shots on goal for Montreal on that power play as Galliardi steps out. And 
and Giordano on it. For Backman, rink wide for Jones, the pass too far for him. And no change for a minute as icing is the call against Calgary. So Thomas Placanitz's line will go out with Gianta and Bork, and they've got a tired Calgary Flames group at the end of the penalty kill. And they'll have a face-off to the left of Joey McDonald. And Weidman way late getting back to the face-off circle. Uh, he got lost there for a moment. He just bought 10 seconds, and then Backlund jumps early. They bought another 10. And the face-off won by Galliardi for Giordano. And Jones chips that down to the Montreal zone. This change can start for Calgary. Real good job by Galliardi on the draw. Placanitz gets his own pass right back, steps around Weidman. Now Placanitz back on him, and Weidman stepped back into him. Monahan back out there for Calgary. And retreating is Georgian with Galliardi all over him. Now Galliardi back on it. Battles there with Bork. And Hoodler plays it for Galliardi. He banked it back, but Brody had moved to the middle of the ice. 19-9, the shots on goal for Montreal. Flames lead 2-0. Just joining us, Sean Monaghan's extended his point streak to four games. Has a goal and an assist so far tonight. Brandon puts with the backhand shot, bounces in front of McDonald, and he'll hang on to that. 12-16 to go in the second period. Joy McDonald robs Andre Mark up twice in tight. Profile brought to you by Scotiabank. Sean Monahan will turn 19 on Saturday, the sixth pick overall in the 2013 draft. Of course, had his first NHL game last week, picked up a point, got his first goal a night later against Columbus. And NHL rules state that a junior age player can spend nine games in the league before it counts as a season. So Monahan playing game number four of the nine, make it harder and harder for the Calgary Flames send it back to Ottawa of the Ontario Hockey League. I mentioned in the open the similarities that I see to Ryan O'Reilly. And when O'Reilly made it as an 18-year-old, I thought it was a little bit of a step ahead of him because I thought his skating might be a little bit young. You know, it didn't have any maturity to it. And I think the same way for Mark Penn, but the more you watch him, I'm like, oh my God, the kid does just about everything right. He's real simple, real straightforward, and he's been remarkably productive. In on Diaz now as Sven Verci comes in to help as well. And Stepniak steps into Pacioretty who goes into the boards in front of the Calgary bench. And loses his stick in the process. Markov backboard as Calgary starts to change. Markov, long lead pass goes by everyone. And it's icing against Montreal. So lots of Calgary fans are excited about Sean Monaghan's NHL start. How about PGA golfer Graham Gillette? It was terrific at the President's Cup on the weekend. Absolutely loving this Monaghan kid was his tweet tonight. The Saskatchewan native had a fabulous year on the PGA Tour. Big Flames fan. In the FedEx Cup playoffs there, he had the beard going. He looked like he was going in the going through a playoff run. He had a, just a terrific end of the year. And so far, Monahan keeping his head about him. As you might expect. Long lead pass for Street, jumping in, and Markov sweeps that away. Buck loose in the corner, knocked back in front. Price steers that away from Street. Jones back on it, spins around Bouillon. And David Jones back with it. Slides it down to Glenn Cross. He plays it down for Street. Back he goes to Russell. Now we play keep away for a moment. Now Cross finally has it for Montreal to Markov. And he goes to White. Drops it off for Moen. Back in front for White. Rolling puck shoots. And McDonald got just a piece of that. Other way, Sonority with a shot off the stick of Moen and wide. And Travis Moen back with it. That pass too high for Cross to handle. And here's Weidman with it. Up ahead to Glenn Cross. Midway point of the second period. Now related by a score of 2 0. And a long lead pass in for Hoodgury. Hoodner with a shot and Price to save on him. At the line, kept alive by Jordano with a long shot. That's off a leg and wide. TJ Brody steps up. 
Brody, nifty move. Drops that puck down for Hoodler. Gary Hoodler. Now for Galliardi. High off the end glass. And Georgia steps into him. Brendan Gallagher chipping it by Brody. Rides him off the puck. They collide hard in the corner. Now Galliardi away. Chance for a three on two for Calgary. Rink wide for Giordano. Sends it back in front of bouncing puck. And Carey Price hangs on to that. Gary Price and the Montreal Canadiens down 2-0 here in the second period on Scotiabank. Wednesday night hockey. This one here, right? Michelle Terrian was their coach the first time around. Well, he can't be very happy with what he's seen for most of the night. The Canadiens' awareness of where players are on the ice has been rather dreadful at times. Look at Josh Georges. He's standing up at center ice. He's got no idea that Yuri Hoodler is behind him. His partner has to communicate that to Georges if he doesn't know. But the Canadians have been caught standing around a little bit in their zone. They've opened up some pass lanes. And while the Flames have just 12 shots, there hasn't been any great pressure in the Calgary zone. It's been a lot of one shot and out. And at the other end, the Canadians just, in my opinion, just have not been very sharp tonight. Not enough fight to their game. Now Monaghan peels back at center ice. Tried to flip that ahead. Bork got in the way of that. Now Gianta away with Buchanan. Ryan Gianta to Thomas Buchanan. Down he goes to Bork. Russell steps into him, the much bigger man, and the battle ensues behind the Gallery goal. Four players down there, now five as Monaghan comes in, and Monaghan picks it out for Weidman. Kempniak back to help out. Goes the other way for it. And Diaz steps up for Montreal. Here's Bork with it. Russell steps back into him. And Stepniak being watched by Buchanan looks for Monaghan. His pass was off a skate chance now for Bork. Shoot, he missed short side. Bear couldn't find it, and Berchi sends it up to center ice. That's real good work by that Montreal line. They stayed in the play, they stayed on the puck, and as a result, they had some zone time. That's how you start to turn the turn the tide of a 2-0 deficit. Jones and Georges collide hard. Subban chips it ahead for Pacioretty. His pass up to center ice, intercepted by O'Brien. Eight to go in the second period. And Jones fires it down. P.K. Subban. He's had a real quiet evening as well here. Rear ahead for Pacioretty. In across the line, waiting for a line change to complete the pass for Dayarnay goes a straight. And away comes Glenn Cross with it. Rink wide, he goes for straight. Now Street with a long shot, tries to save, gloves it. And now throws the puck ahead for Denorti. Briere with it. Looking for a change, spins and fires it down to the Calgary zone. Now a lead pass for Hoodler. And Galliardi with it. Lars Eller bounces that down to the Calgary zone and back to pick it up is Mark Giordano. Oh, nice exit by Giordano, right up the middle of the ice to Backlund. Under pressure, he found the open open man and an easy out for the Flames. Now Backlund with it. Michael Backlund sends it back in front of the pass just in behind Hoodler. The lead pass for Yuri Hoodler goes off his stick to Bouillon. Now to fuck in front of the Calgary bench, here's Eller. Backhands that down to the Calgary zone as both teams will change. Weidman, long lead pass goes by everyone. And icing waved off. Mowen down to Diaz. Across for Markov. Long pass for Crust. Up ahead for White. He'll wrap it around. McDonald couldn't get to it. Travis Mowen on it. Fourth line out there for Montreal. And Weidman looks ahead to McGrath. Ryan McGrath chips that ahead for Boma. Gets their first against the ice. He tried to center it. Goes off the side of the net. Here's Prust with it. Intercepted by McGrath with a shot, and Price fights that off. Ryan McGrath did score three times last year. As White plays it ahead for Moen, and a long shift for this group. And O'Brien across to Butler. Lead pass goes to Monaghan, gloves that, or Stepniak rather, at the line, gloves it down. And now Monaghan in for it. Tiberci. Back for Monaghan. 
Backhands that wide of the goal. Stempniak wins the race with the puck. And Subban skates by it for Montreal, gets bottled up, and Georges has to go back and pick it up. Bork along with Gianta. And Bork tries to center. Monaghan picks it up, flips up to the sideboard. Tanoni steps up for Montreal. Stepniak up to center right. It's a hard pass for Berti along with Monaghan. They've got to go off as Berti swats that back down to the Montreal zone. Bouillon for Briere. That was close to too many men as Briere in the corner centers it. Knocked away by McDonald as Bork was standing on the doorstep looking for the loose puck. Now Glenn Cross back with Bork. Brody rather and Brody taken down in front of the Montreal goal. And there's no penalty. Lead pass to Glenn Cross. In across the line, Curtis Glenn Cross in front of Bouillon. Takes him hard into the sideboards. Penalty coming to Francis Bouillon with 4.33 to go. In the second period, the Calgary Flames will go to the power play when Scotiabank Wednesday Night Hockey returns to Calgary. Francis Bouillon in the penalty box for boarding as he shoves Glenn Cross from behind. The Calgary power play gets their first chance. And Weidman unloads it as Glenn Cross in front. Price with a bad save and able to hang on. As Weidman's waiting for an area to shoot the puck, Glenn Cross is directly in front of Price and he's got nowhere to go when the shot's waist high. Weidman can really heat it up. And you see Glenn Cross, he's in a great spot here. The puck ends up hitting him in the midsection before he can shovel it back at Price. Not sure it's a great spot when you get hit by it. No, it really makes you a little less willing to go in there the next time. And Weidman back with it. Drops it back to Hooker with a shot. Missed some of that. And now Brody with it. C.J. Brody. Slides it down to Glenn Cross. Looks back to Weidman to Brody. Cross the top, he goes for Hoodler. Brody to Hoodler, one-time shot, blocked in front by Mark, off bouncing puck, and Jones back to Hoodler. Back at the line is Brody. And Jones with a chance, that deflects just wide, back in front of Hoodler, backdoor pass, that was deflected away from Weidman, who would have had a tap in. And now Weidman shoots, scores, straight across the tip, 3-0 Calgary. That's that same duo. This time, Weidman doesn't hit Glenn Cross with the shot. He really loaded up the first one. This one, it's just a spin and wrister to the front of the net. And Glenn Cross keeps the puck alive here. Nice play by Tenorti to keep the play moving. But Glenn Cross and Jones in front of the net. The wrister from Weidman as he just turns and shovels it back towards the net. Glenn Cross takes the shot wide of the net and tips it back through Carey Price. The Flames' second power play goal of the year. And a 3-0 Calgary lead. Glenn Cross led the Flames with 15 goals last year. 13 of them scored here. Flames goal is second of the season. Scored by number 20. And a long Glenn shot of McDonald handled easily. And Gallagher sent flying by Giordano. And that's going to be a penalty to the Flames captain with 3.22 to go in the second. Glenn Cross from wide for the scoring play at 16.22. At the end of their previous shift, Giordano and Gallagher were jawing at each other bench to bench. The next time they get on the ice, Giordano ends up taking Gallagher down for a tripping penalty. And if Montreal's ever going to get back in it, they're going to need something from their power play here. It's a power play that should be good. Here's the trip by Giordano as he sticks out his right leg and kicks the feet out from Gallagher. This power play should be good. They had an excellent second one, a rather poor first one, and down three, they've got to find a way to wedge themselves back into this game. So the question now for Calgary, can the Flames close the deal with the big lead? Keller wins the draw back to Markov for Subban. Subban to Galchenya. Cross ice pass for Markov, which snuck in. He banks it off the inboards to Eller. Markov back at the point for Subban. Across to Eller. Down low to Galchenya. 
In for Eller. Mars Eller looks down low. Galchenyuk steps out. Wraparound try stopped by McDonald. And now Subban back with it. Cross he goes. Markov with a shot that got blocked. He's fanned on it partially. And now Subban picks the puck up at center ice. 80 seconds to go in this power play. Here's Eller back with it. Butler steps into him. Weidman collides here with Galchenyuk with the puck loose to Ben Street. On his backhand with a rolling puck. Can't get it out. And now Bulma does. He's swung it up by Markov. Now Markov has that pass go off street. Stays on side. Rink wind. He goes for Pacioretty. Back to Subban. The drive scores. P.K. Subban. Power play goal. There's the spark Montreal was looking for. Oh, what a rocket from Subban. The Flames get a little deep, and they don't have somebody in front of Subban. A clean shot lane to the point, from the point, rather. As the puck's going to end up down here on Daniel Briere's stick. <laughs> wow. Sorry, Pacioretty with the puck. And he puts it right on the tee. That's a bullet. By P.K. Subban and the Canadians crawl their way back here. They match the Flames' power play goal. That's his first of the year. He had 11 last year. Subban played 20 and a half minutes the other night against Philadelphia. And the Montreal fans in attendance making their presence felt as Berti works in along with Giordano rink wide, but the play was offside at the Montreal line. The Calgary bench is up. They can't believe this was whistled offside. Giordano had jumped into the play. This is going to be a clean two on one, but Berti has put himself offside on the play. His feet go over the line before the puck. You see, Berti's got to wait for it and both feet come over the line before the puck is over the line. He doesn't have full control. And the offside is called. 1.45 to go. Here in the second period, Brody goes back with Bork. And now Hoodler with it for the Flames. Ahead he goes for Monaghan, back for Hoodler. Played in for Berchi. Down to Monaghan. Back for Sven Berchi. Rolling puck. Trying to center it. Bouillon stepped into him. Now Hoodler battling down low. And chipped back down to the Calgary zone as Brody goes back. And that's icing against Montreal. So P.K. Subban, the reigning Norris Trophy winner, is the NHL's top defenseman. He won that award by getting one more first place vote than Ryan Suter of the Minnesota Wild. 7 is 11 were scored the power play. 38 points in 42 games. He's a restricted free agent coming up next summer, so back up the truck. That was what the two-year bridge deal was about, wasn't it? Yeah. Prove your worth. A Norris Trophy will probably not hurt that. This game so matured last year that the boldness stayed and the risk left. Now Glenn Cross with it on Markov who swats that away up to Briere. 24-15 of the shots on goal in favor of Montreal. Pacioretty steps around Russell. Max Pacioretty backhands it in front, tip wide by Briere. Now Markov down low to Briere. Sends it back for Dearnay, couldn't get a shot away. And Street picks up the loose puck. Street bounces that down to Price, who knocks that to the corner. And here's Markov with it. Long lead pass by Diaz for Galchenyuk. Across the line, back and stripped him of the puck. Now kept alive by Eller for Galchenyuk. Bounce the pass off Brody. Final second of the second period. Rear digging for it, picked up by Backlund. And Michael Backlund lifts out of the center ice as Bouillon is back for it. T.J. Galliardi at the horn, can't get a shot away. And Calgary will go to the dressing room with a 3-1 lead through 40 minutes of play. As we said, you are our second admission with James Duffy and the panel. A pretty interesting one that started to develop 
in the midst of the game. It's Sven Berchi and, and P.K. Subban who have run together a couple times now. Subban, of course, is an established player, young player, but established. Berchi trying to show some fight and then he's developing into an everyday NHL player. And so they've come together a couple of times. They get the sticks up one time right in front of me there as I'm backing up in a hurry. But I like the fight that Berchi's shown here. He's was kicked in the shins in the preseason by Brian Burke, and he's played much better in the four games to the start of the regular season. He scored in the first, and then Subban's rocket on the power play makes the game three to one. It'll be interesting to see as Berchi's career continues to evolve. His development of puck possession and strength over the puck is going to be paramount to him realizing his offensive talent. The, the ceiling on him is high, but he's got to get a little stronger so when he has the puck, he can hang on to it longer. He scored three goals in his first four NHL games and three in the next 24. So the teams begin the third period at even strength. And Subban, who lit a fire to the Canadians and had some interesting comments between periods to Ryan Rashog about a sloppy practice yesterday carrying over. David Jones tries to chip that ahead. It's the line for the escape. Now Markov back on it. And he goes to Gallagher. Brendan Gallagher works in, shoots, fan of the shot. There's Jordan might have got a piece of that. Now loose in front. McDonald's the save, and Gallagher at the rebound, squirt away from him. Calgary breaks out three on two. TJ Brody. Across for back, the back in front for Brody, and that puck bounced away from him. Back, but wrestling there with Dayarnay. And play continues. The puck bounces down to the Calgary zone, and icing is called. Well, Backlund having a discussion with Dan O'Halloran. He thought that should have been a penalty behind the play. O'Halloran has a quick word, and that's the end of that. That would be the end of the argument. You can't do that. That's all you got to say there is you can't do that. The Mike Lego gift to the hockey lexicon. You can't do that. Here's a chance on a turnover. Catch ready. Turned away by McDonald. It's like the old NFL official that said that's 15 yards for giving them the business. I think it's Red Cash. And here's Russell with it. Sends that rink wide. And back is Jared Denorti for it. To Bouillon. Now we're trying to put the pressure on the Canadians here in the career to not back off as they did in Washington and against Vancouver on Sunday. This is the type of game here where I'm interested to see if Daniel Briere can make a, an impact five on five. He's had a real quiet night. This line has to make something happen for Montreal. They've been pretty silent for most of the evening. Now Russell centers that puck. Monaghan sends it back in front of Barrett. She tapped it wide. Price might have got a piece. Here's Brody with it. D.J. Brody sends it across to Giordano with a drive. Saved by Price up the other side. Oh, great pad saved by Price on Berchi. So two good chances in tight for the Flames. And now Brody brings it back. Up ahead for Stepniak. Drops it back for Giordano. Long shot. He whistled that just wide. And now Stepniak tried to step into it. Here's Monaghan back to Stepniak. Come on ahead, walking in, shoots, twice the save, bouncing puck in front. And gathered up by four to Placanis. The Canadians are missing Alexi Yemelin, who won't be back into the new year, and Douglas Murray, who's still out another couple of weeks, and their defensive zone's far too soft. David Jones with a shot off a stick of Markov and wide. Now there's just, there's there's just too much room down there, Gord. Calgary's moved the puck off the wall to a scoring spot too easily in this third period, as well as they had done in the first period. Now Lance Bullock wraps that around. Joe Colbert plays it across. Again, the fourth line out for Calgary. And Ryan White goes rink wide for Bully on the pass too far for him. O'Brien ahead to McGrath. Now Ryan White checks the rearview mirror as McGrath was closing on him, and then in front of him, Boma stepped into him. Bullion slides out ahead, and O'Brien picks it up as both teams change. Three and a half gone here in the third period. Calgary leading three to one. Long shot down on Price, handles that, and Subban looks that high in the air and up to center ice. Montreal will be in Edmonton tomorrow night, Vancouver on Saturday.
Homecoming for Brendan Gallagher and for Terry Price playing in the NHL City close to his home of Anaheim Lake, BC. And in comes Lars Eller across the line, drops it off to Gallagher, tees it up and just cued that wide of the goal. And Brody back with it for Calgary. T.J. Brody leads the rush for the Flames, drops it off for Galliardi. Across he goes and hammered wide by Hoodler. And things opening up here in the third period as Eller jumps in across the line. Four Flames converge on him as he pokes it down to the corner. Diaz to Markov. Off to Rafael Diaz. Shots are 24-18 in Montreal's favor. Weidman back for it. Across he goes to Russell through the middle for Street. His pass intercepted by Dayarnay. Bounces off. Weidman who brings it ahead for Glenn Cross. Curtis Glenn Cross dropped back for the trailer. Jones with a shot off the stick of Pacioretty. Up and out of play. You never know when the save a goaltender makes might keep you in and give you a chance to win. Look at this stop here by Carey Price. Deflection off the end boards and Price sprawls out to get his right leg on the effort here by by Berchi gets the right pad on it, it bounces across and hits the left pad. Desperation move by Carey Price as the Flames had several good chances on that shift. Street wins the draw back for Russell. Weidman goes rink wide, intercepted by Placanitz who looks ahead for Prust. Brandon Prust. That shot drifts wide of the goal. Placanitz now spins and shoots, that goes wide. So this is Prust with Placanitz and Gianta. Gordon, normally the left winger on this line as Glenn Claus comes in. His long shot drifts wide. Now Tenorti loses the puck to Glenn Cross, and twice has to play that away from him. On and sends it back in front. Glenn Cross tips that right on goal, and Price has to make a quick reflex save. That puck was in full Canadian's possession. Five seconds later, Glenn Cross is alone in front of the net. And now Monaghan, a long shot, and Price will hang on to that. Well, the Thanksgiving Classic kicks off this weekend with Wendy's Friday Night Football. The Lions are in Calgary take on the Stampeders at McMahon Stadium. Live coverage underway at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, right here on TSN. Here in attendance tonight is Stampeders coach John Huffnick, head coach and general manager. In case the name tag didn't give it away. I don't think he really needs one here. Berchi back to Butler for Stempniak through the traffic and Price makes a pass save with Berchi standing right in the doorstep. Here's Monahan with the steal. Berchi flips it back to Stempniak in and shoots. That's off a stick up and out of play. So here's John Huffnagel's reaction earlier to the goal by Curtis Glenn Cross. He has one of, he's, he and Patrick Waugh, by the way, Ray, have an ear-splitting whistle. You know, I've heard, you know, I've heard Waugh's. Yeah. You can hear that just about everywhere. Hoffnagel puts the two fingers there and can bust a wine glass. Waugh's is unbelievable. Bork in across the line now with Moen and White. Ready to work with a sharp angle shot. Stopped by McDonald. Now here's Moen back on it. Sent back through everyone and out to center ice. So Bork now on the fourth line with Moen and White. As Pruss gets some time with Placanitz and Gianta. And Monaghan scoops up a loose buck for Calgary. Pass intercepted by White. And Moen brings it ahead. Now Bork back with a long shot. Just that high and wide. Two defensive zone turnovers with the Flames undoing in the third period against Vancouver on Sunday night. Subban brings it ahead. Montreal in the midst of a change as Subban fights off Galliardi. Goes after his own shoot in, gets an arm on Butler. This is going to be a penalty, I believe, against Subban. And Markov touches up, and PK Subban's going to get it for the hole. Doesn't like it one bit. Dogger to the power play when we come back. You're trying to do too much on his own as P.K. Subban as he rushes the puck up the ice. He thought this was a penalty here from the slash on Galliardi, but here is the penalty as he wraps up Chris Butler. And as he went to the penalty box, you can see him as 
animated discussion with Kyle Raymond as he's trying to show him. He thought the slash was the penalty. Nonetheless, the Flames have a chance to stretch this lead out again. Glenn Cross had the last power play goal for the Flames. Jones will take the offensive zone face off. Hoodler and Glenn Cross the other forwards. Weidman and Brody on the back end. A rolling puck back to Brody. Cross to Weidman. Back to Brody to Weidman. Being shadowed there by Prust. And Brody down to Hoodler. Yuri Hoodler winds his way in, has time, drops it down to Glenn Cross. Back to Hoodler. Jones in the high slot. Hoodler goes back instead to Brody. To Hoodler again open, walks in, waits. Shoots that's blocked by Markov and cleared by Placanis. And Hudler back with it. Trying to feather that pass in for Jones. Knocked down by Eller, but not out. Here's Jones back with it. Hard pass back to Brody. Across he goes to Weidman. Down to Glenn Cross. In for Hudler. The pass hit the official Raymond. And the Canadians are able to clear. Stepniak, Berchi and Monaghan out up front for the Flames with the power play. And Stepniak looking for Monaghan, but Diaz sends it down the ice. And Joy McDonald out to play it away from Moen. Giordano, rink wide, he goes for Stepniak. Settles the puck down, looks in for Giordano. Knocked away from Diaz by Monaghan. Lays on side as Stepniak banks it off the glass, but it goes up and out of play. The faceoff will be in the Montreal zone. Nothing going for the Flames on this power play. That first group had in zone possession, yet they were real stationary, and it makes it pretty easily, pretty easy for the penalty killers to stay in front of them. Hula will go back out here, and he'll join Monaghan and Stepniak for the last 38 seconds of this power play. Monaghan lost seven of nine faceoffs through two periods. Out against Placanis. Well, he's in game four, and he's taking a draw here against the guy in game 601. You learn to be better at the draw, but he gets nice help there from Stempniak. Russell across to Giordano. Plays it down to Hoodler. Now in front for Stempniak, a drive. Price, a great save there. And Stempniak was alone in the high slot. 20 seconds to go in the Calgary power play. Crush steps into Giordano. And Russell picks it up for Calgary. Works it ahead for Stepniak, gets his own pass back, drops it off to Monaghan, looking back for Stepniak. Way up in the air, Price will glove that. And hang on with five seconds to go in the Subban penalty. You hear coaches all the time talking about details and small items that help the game. Well, if the detail's not here from Stepniak, which is helping win the faceoff, five seconds later, he's not standing in the slot and getting this one-time chance on Carey Price. Small thing. But a detail and the finer point that the coach always hammers home to the team is on display as Stepniak helps out on the draw and it gets an excellent scoring chance. Now it's Backlund against White. Backlund wins the draw back to Russell. Across the top, Russell, a wrist shot was wide. Now Price on it as Backlund was looking for the loose puck. Pacioretty swaps that ever Subban out of the box for Montreal. And P.K. Subban got spun around there by Galliardi, and Subban's already arguing with the official on that. Long pass by Russell goes off the leg of Diaz. And a big hit by Bouillon. As he sent David Jones flying. Now D'Arnais back for Diaz. He got spun around by Backlund. And Briere trying to flip that ahead. Galliardi got in the way. Pacioretty lost the puck to Stepniak. Weidman flips that by D'Arnais. And Stepniak up for Backlund. Now Price leaves it there for Subban to Briere. Back to Subban. D.K. Subban ahead for Galchenyuk. That long shot handled by McDonald. Long rebound cleared away by Brody. And the shot from Eller goes well wide of the goal. Glenn Cross trying to chip it out. Street on the second try couldn't get it out, and now Briere has it down in the corner. Now Briere back with it. Loose in the corner is Daniel Briere looking across for Galchenyuk. Street got spun around. Eller with the steal, the puck loose in front. Brody can't find it. Galchenyuk with a chance, and Briere with a little backhand shot goes wide. 
now the Flames hemmed in a bit as Subban steps up. He gets dropped down. Eller spins it back for Subban. Walks in. Deflects right on goal. McDonald reaches up, makes that save. And now Mark out across to Subban. Waits, winds, fires. Tipped by Galchenyuk. Rebound. Score! Lars Eller. And Montreal is back to lead one. Excellent end zone pressure. Daniel Briere is just absolutely on fumes here. Coming back to the Montreal bench. He was stuck out at the end of the shift. Gallagher has been waiting to get on the ice, but the point shot misses the net from Subban, and it bounces right to Lars Eller. This is the second goal this year that has been almost identical for Eller. He scored one the other night against Philadelphia on the other side of the net. This time, Subban shooting for the deflection for Galchenyuk, who doesn't tip it. It becomes a nice break for Montreal as it hits the boards, bounces to Eller, his sixth point of this young season. Has pulled the Canadians to within one. And four goals represent half his total from last season, Ray, when he was a healthy scratch twice in the first week of the season. And Alpha Canets with it. Sends it back in front. Russell must knocks it down and ahead for Hoodler. So again, Ray, the Flames had chances to clear it out and couldn't, and the puck winds up in their net. Weidman, long shot, trolls up Price's arm, loose in front. Price wants that away. 8.40 to go. Flames now up by one. And you know they've got to start converting more of these leads into two points instead of one. Meantime, Montreal awakes from a bit of a slumber through the first two periods. Now a loose puck on the side of the goal, knocked away by Price. That puck deflected up and out of play. Lars Eller has four goals in his first three games, and Montreal's back within one on Scotiabank Wednesday night on. Tired you get in the defensive zone when the puck doesn't come out of the zone. Three times the Flames have an opportunity to clear it. There's one with Stemniak. Glenn Cross can't get there quick enough for Subban. And as the play moves around, you're going to see it go to the front of the net. It turns into a little bit of a ping pong ball here. Brody and Stemniak can't get it out. And then watch everybody look to the puck when it misses the net. Nobody finds Lars Eller. And the Canadians are back in the game. And Subban, who sparked him with that late power play goal in the second period, fires it at here. Pacioretty along with Dayarnay. Pacioretty whistles that high and wide. And now Subban with it. Puck bounces off a leg and out. And now the Canadians have to tag back up onside. Butler to O'Brien being watched there by Briere. Johnson 28-24 Montreal. In comes Pacioretty along with Dayarnay and Briere. Max Pacioretty winds it. A backhand shot goes through the crease. And now Markov with it. Andre Markov slides it down to Dayarnay. In for Pacioretty. Shoots. McDonald save. Rebound. Briere in tight. Turned away. Now a chance back in front. Subban hammered that wide. McDonald was down and out. Markov shoots. McDonald has no stick. And Subban reaches. Keeps the puck alive. McDonald's stick is in the net. Now Subban sends it down in front. Pacioretty sprawling for it. And McDonald retrieves his stick from behind him. Markov keeps it alive down for Dayarnay. Bumping there with O'Brien. Galliardi now picks it up for Calgary. He's got Hoodler with him. TJ Galliardi in. Fighting off the check of Pacioretty. And now Pacioretty intercepts. Montreal and Calgary fans trying to out chant each other here in the third period. Diaz snaps it ahead for Galchenya. Out there along with Gallagher and Eller. Lars Eller down for Galchenya, walks in and fires. McDonald the save, squeezes this short side post and hangs on. And some nervous moments for the Flames in their own zone when their goaltender had no stick. They're lucky he didn't have a stick because he lost it prior to it by making a couple of fantastic stops. The second one on Briere, and when he dove back, Subban had the whole net. He doesn't get it to the net. It misses the cage. You see McDonald once and twice looked for it. He can't pick his stick up because the pressure 
never leaves the front of the net. Now, finally, he gets a chance to scoop it back up. But a bit of a fire drill in the Calgary zone as they've now lost their structure a little bit. You can see some panic creeping in. And this is where it would be nice to have a real veteran centerman in the middle of their lineup. Matt Stajan's their most veteran center with 650 games. They just got 203 combined for their centers in the lineup tonight. Somebody to help settle them down, win a draw, take a little panic out of the next shift or the shift that follows a, a crazy one like just happened in the flame zone. And Camilleri out as well can also take face off. They're fired down in the Calgary zone. And Giordano has it. Up ahead for Bomo, who chips that down to the Montreal zone. Under six to go in the third period. Montreal trailed this game 3 0 in the second. Don't forget, last Thursday, Calgary had a 3 0 and 4 1 lead on Washington before losing in a shootout. Russell spins and plays it off the glass up the center ice. Hit Stimniak in the back. Puck had some serious hang time on it. Now Markov looks ahead, but Russell intercepts for Calgary. Weidman's long pass. Missed Berti. Now kick back down to the flame zone. 31-24, the shots for Montreal. Monahan for Stimniak, who slides that down to the Montreal zone and peels off on a chain. Here comes Subban with it. Steps around Galliardi. P.K. Subban jumping in one on four. Subban in shoots and McDonald makes the save as Subban goes for a 200 foot dash here in Calgary. So that's electric player of the game is brought to you by Chevrolet. In the first period, Joey McDonald was perfect, made 13 straight stops. A lot of them were one and out, but several of them were very difficult stops as the game's gone on. He's had to be continually sharp with second opportunities around the front of the net. Your electric player of the game in his third straight start is Joey McDonald. Draw one back to Markov. Subban a shot of McDonald, kicks that away. And since that big closure of the corner, David Jones has not returned for Calgary, still on the bench. As DRNA centers for Pacioretty, that's broken up by Backlund. Wyman. Picks his way across the line. Hooker rink wide for back with the pass in behind him. And Subban spins away from Hoodler. Well, Michelle Perrion is all over the officials here. Feels that they've missed a couple of calls late here against the Calgary Flames. Now Galchenyuk with a drive. And McDonald hangs on to that. Let's go back to the injury to Calgary's David Jones. See Jones sitting on right to my left on the Calgary bench. And a little earlier in the period, he goes into the corner with Francis Bouillon. And Bouillon is a little bulldog of a competitor. He gets underneath the shoulder of Jones, knocks him right on his back, and you see Jones getting some treatment on his upper back and neck. He hasn't been on the ice since that collision. Frankie Bouillon does that about 12 times a year, Ray. Just catches someone who doesn't think he's going to step into them. And... Real good skater, solid. Galchenyuk a drive and McDonald another save. Wow, can that kid get rid of the puck in a hurry? <laughs> he took no, no time there to spin around and get it at the net. And McDonald sharp again. That is a big league release. Keller gets street in the face off, wins it cleanly. And pulling on his long shot, drifts wide on the other side of Diaz. Rafael Diaz fires, that's kicked out, rebound, loose in front for Gallagher, the puck's still sitting there. And Glenn Cross goes off the glass, and that will trickle down the ice, and is icing against Calgary. Scotiabank Wednesday Night Hockey on TSN is brought to you by Scotiabank. You're richer than you think. Ryan Rashad, Darren Dreger, the TSN production group here on this Wednesday night. 3.54 to go. Calgary leading 3-2 on Montreal. That draw one by Street. Brody trying to squeeze that by Markov, but the Canadians keep it alive. Gianta centers it. And the bouncing puck goes to Puma, who plays it out to the Montreal line. 
Andre Markov snaps that pass ahead for Buchanan. Gloved down by Gianta. Back in front. Buchanan couldn't reach it. And now Bork back out there with Buchanan and Gianta. Buchanan sends it back in front. Kick away by Giordano. At the line. Kept alive by Markov. Down low to Gianta. Shovels that in front. Knocked away by Giordano. In the last five minutes have been played almost exclusively in the Calgary zone. 35-24, the shots for Montreal. Here come the Canadians again. Galchenyuk with Gallagher. Galchenyuk in, shoots. He whistled that high, short side. And now Hoodler with it, along with Backlund. And Hoodler lifts that softly down to the Montreal zone as Backlund goes in for it. Under three to go now in the third. Bouillon for Galchenyuk with Eller and Gallagher. Three flames collided just inside the line. Berchi got shaken up. In comes Monahan. Berchi's making his way slow to the bench. Stepniak walks in. What a move by Stepniak. Trace down, wrap around, try, and Gallagher saved the goal. Back to Giordano. Across to Brody with a drive. Hit something in front. Stepniak, a backhand shot, and Price makes the save on him. This all started with a train wreck in the Calgary zone. And now Brody with it. Flips that down to the Montreal end. Subban winds his way ahead. For Pacioretty, back to Subban who jumps into the rush. Tries to shovel that back in front. And Galliardi has it. High backhand pass. Gloved down by Markov. And Briere can't find it. Galliardi sent flying into the boards as he collided with Briere. And Subban cross-checking Boma as hard as he can. And I think O'Halloran saw it. And P.K. Subban's going to get a penalty with 1.49 to go in the third period. He got away with the first four, Ray, but not the last one. Well, on the sideboards, the, the play is at a dead standstill. And Subban's going to creep up behind Bowman. You're right, here's one, there's two, there's another one, there's another one. And finally, Dan O'Halloran's had enough. The puck is 15, 20 feet away here. It's a bad penalty for Subban to take after a brilliant performance in the last 25 minutes of this hockey game. Michelle Therrien is staring daggers through the officials. He didn't think that they got any calls earlier in this period. He certainly didn't like that call there. And this is a good timeout for Bob Hartley to take on the Calgary bench. They're on the power play. They want to make sure they move the puck and be sure with it. Don't turn it over and let Montreal make a, a home run attempt at it. And Subban still shaking his head in the penalty box. You just can't give the official the opportunity to make that call. There's no reason to continue on cross-checking Lance Bowman. The puck is gone. The play is gone. And now Montreal's short-handed here for the last one minute and 49 seconds. Calgary the win, a shootout loss, and an overtime loss, seeking to pick up points in a fourth consecutive game to open the season. Calgary has New Jersey here on Friday, then hits the road for five. Street, Hudler, and Glenn Cross up front of the power play. Weidman and Brody on the back end. And the faceoff went back to Brody. To Weidman, a rolling puck. Shoots, chance in front. And Street put that just wide. Now back at the point is Brody. Broken stick out there. And now Hoodler. Back to Brody. Cross to Weidman. Snaps it across to Hoodler. Sends it back door for Glenn Cross. Weidman back to Brody. In for Hoodler. Back to Brody. The pass skipped away from him. And now Carey Price is making his way to the Montreal bench, but retreats. Now being called to the bench after all. So the extra skater comes on for Montreal. It's Patch ready. And the Canadian's net is empty. Hoodler for Glenn Cross. Curtis Glenn Cross in across the line. Has some time. Poke check by Bullion. Gallagher picks up the loose puck. Final minute now of the third period. Gallagher turns it over. And Street finds Glenn Cross. Glenn Cross shoots. He misses wide. Bullion back on it. 
Out to center right to go to Giordano. Way up in the air. That's a field goal over the crossbar. And back with intercept. Sends it back in front for Galliardi. TJ Galliardi lays it around. 30 seconds to go now in the third period. Eller, along with Pacioretty and Gallagher. Max Pacioretty works in. Trying to get around Weidman. And Eller collides with Weidman in the corner. Now Hoodler on his backhand. Can't get it up. Second try to the line and helped up by Galliardi, who spins it down to the Montreal zone. Ten seconds to go. Diaz fires it down. Out the other side. Markov jumping on it. Andre Markov with a rolling puck. Glenn Cross on his backhand sends it down and misses wide at the horn. And the Calgary Flames win it 3 to 2 over the Montreal Canadiens. Outshot 35 to 25. The Flames make a three goal lead stand up. And win it by a final of 3 to 2 as Calgary continues to raise eyebrows around the NHL. For all of us at TSN, I'm Gord Miller. This has been a presentation of TSN, Canada's sports leader. Coming up, it's Sports Center. Let's send you now to Jennifer Hedger.